Let's get down, let's get down to business. Lovely. The little three, two, one countdown from Marty, and you go, ooh, what the fuck am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Keno, DJ Keno, four dates, Keno. <laughs> What is it, dates with the parents, Kino? First dates, pull them with the parents. Pull them with the parents, That's it. Kino. Obviously, you've done the course and stuff like that as well. You're very welcome to Image X. Um, yeah, what's the story? How's life? All yeah, keep it great, Connor. It's great to come up here and just chat to you on the podcast today. Um, yeah. Really, really busy with the gigs, um, the TV world as well, obviously. It was oh, a we'll great... Get in, we'll get into all that. It was a great experience. But yeah, no, great, great to chat to you today. Where are you hailing from? Gordy? Uh, coming Campbell. from Camolan. Coming from Camolan, just outside Gory. Uh, County Wexford, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a nice, nice place now. Balling for Camolan as well. Uh, balling for Camolan, yeah, See playing me. soccer every Sunday. You made a mistake in telling me that you missed the penalty at the oh, weekend. Don't the talk to me about it. Right, any, <laughs> any of his teammates that are listening in on this, yeah, tell me, was it a good save or was it a howler? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I kind of when I went up to the penalty, I picked my spot where I wanted to go. Um, Where'd you go? Top left. I went top left, but it was, a bit, it was a bit too high, <laughs> um, and the, the keeper saved it. Good save. Yeah, it was a good save. It was Very a good save. Early. But the, our keeper actually brought us out of jail. He actually saved the other penalty. So I was actually quite relieved at the time. Um, and then we kind of missed two penalties and after that. But it was a great game. We fought really hard. Can and um, and shame the other lads? Um, no, because they, they, they played very well. They played very well. And, <laughs> to be honest, um, I've knocked teams out of... I've knocked... Jesus. Anybody who's listening in here from Airfield, St. Paul's... Yeah, baby Grange would boy in back in the day. Yeah, I've knocked team. I've knocked us out. I've missed. Probably, <laughs> I probably missed more penos than anybody. Anybody. Yeah. Honest to God, like I should play for the English national team. <laughs> like like penalty shootout. Penalty, penalty shootout was like a pen. It's like a lottery, like isn't it? Yeah, I'm he- just... I'm head down, laces through it, and where it goes, where it goes. Exactly. And that's because I've had years of trying to do this, trying to do that, and yeah. yeah but like save, I mean, crossbar miss. Ugh. Anything like that. Like, yeah. I mean, it was a great experience to get to uh, a Leinster quarterfinal, like, you know, but we'll just take it on the back now and keep going. Yeah, that's it. It sounds like you're on Sky Sports. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great team performance. But, Absolutely. Uh, deadly, deadly. So, listen, there's loads to talk about. Obviously, we met, the first time we met, and obviously you've done a course with us. Yeah. Uh, in Wexford, and the first thing you done, actually, when you came in, oh, how's Steph? How's, how's Dave? I was like, oh, it's great to hear you actually talking about your tutors like that. Absolutely. But, um, obviously, then I met you for the first time at the grad. Uh, which was great. Great. Um, am I right in saying you were in a three piece check? I was in a, yeah, I was in a three piece check I suit. Liked, yeah. I liked my clothes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, and we had a quick chat, and I remember seeing a few bits with you on Instagram. And me personally, I don't know what it is, I've always had a drawing to some sort of a DJ side of things. I'd love to get into DJ. And, well, not now. Of course. But like, I was always into music and stuff like that. I remember saying to you, oh, I saw some music. Yeah. And you're saying, oh, we should chit chat. And Come up and do a podcast and unreal. Like I, I always wanted to come on up here to do a podcast with yourself. Um, start be very interesting. Like and like that night in the grad, it was really really good night. I really really met a lot of new friends. A lot of met a lot of new people that night as still well. Still in touch with your classmates. Still in touch. Still in touch with a lot of them. Um, I chat to them nearly. We we we, we kind of chat nearly every week and see like see how they're getting on and like. A lot of other people are onto new stuff, they're onto new yeah. chapters of their life, and they're yeah. working in different gyms as well, so it's great. You'd be amazed how much you actually keep in touch. Oh, it's amazing. And like, classmates. What this course has like made me learn so much about the, the gym lifestyle and everything else to go with it. Like, it's just been an unreal course. And Jesus, sure, you've so many years ahead of you. You're 21? 21. Jesus. 21, yeah. 21, yeah. I was only getting into it as well. My God, it's yeah. mad, isn't it? And Steph, Dave. Yeah, Steph and Dave, they they just helped me so so much. They they are really are gents, they really are. Like they were down in Wexford every week, kind of helped me to go through different classes. The dubs and, down. Oh, in Wexford. absolutely unreal. What would be like sending them to? Unreal, like and Steph used to come down every every Saturday, like an hour and a half drive, come down to Wexford and just do his thing, like. And he's such a gentleman, yeah, he really is. And Steph's experience is ridiculous. It's great, like it's no, it's he's so so nice and he's, he's honest as well. He's honest very and honest. And same with Dave. Dave's a gent, and Dave, yeah. Dave has so much experience with the fly fits, and he sees so many different types of people. Type of people, of course. Dave is really really good, and I know, I hope to see him again soon because yeah, I yeah, really like. We'll do we'll do a few of these anyway. We can do as many of these podcasts as we need. We get Dave in. Get Dave in, of course. Yeah. Get him yeah. here, yeah. yeah. Get him in the corner, Dave. yeah. That's it. You can, we get we get your tutors in. That's, that's yeah. an idea. We should get tutors in with our students. 
Der er vi ikke, der er vi ikke klar. Lad os styre den slide dem. Ja, det er brilliant. And so listen, talk to me about the, like I know we, we can go back and forth and talk about different things to do with the, the courses and stuff like that, but we're, we're not here to talk about yeah. image fitness training. It's, I'm actually interested in you, how to flick through your Instagram and stuff like that. And yeah. obviously saw a few bits and bobs, you're playing big gigs, but the one that stuck out to me was one with your granddad in 2015, was it? And I said, that's where it all started. That's so where, yeah. Is that where you got a love That's for where it? I started, really. So back in 2015, I was only a young age at the time and I always was playing music in my room every, every night, really, when I was young. What I was you listening to? Just always then? listening to like, the likes of David Guetta, Calvin Harris, all like they kind of they're my inspiration. Like you know what I mean. Like I was, I always looked up to them when I was younger. Like at the age of maybe fourteen, thirteen, like to say like what have they have done? It's it's, it's been amazing, you know. And always listening to their, their tunes in my room and like ever since that, like I was I had my first gig. Then I was doing my um, like, it was my dad's birthday. Like I so saw he, uh, he kind of asked me to come up and do yeah, will yeah. you do a gig keen and went up to the pub, my local pub down in Camolan and just played away. That night and nervous. I, uh, I was very nervous at the time, yeah. But I, I had my microphone in my hand and I just kept shouting on the mic, "Come on, get on the dance floor and all, yeah." Deadly. And um, ever since that night, then it was kind of just kept going. I kept going. I set up my own Facebook, my own Instagram page, and I just kept following. Get get the followers out there and. And even equipment wise, the first gig. Yeah, the equipment on? like the equipment I had was literally only a laptop and just a small kind of Newmark kind of controller. It was literally so so small, like. Um, and the speakers weren't really great at the time. They, only, they were great for that event, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, the, I hadn't great equipment at that time. It was just get out there and see see how it goes. And are you bringing all your own gear or would you go to a gig? Like, I'm asking this from a complete... Like, yeah, so right now, complete. so, like, I, I was I was always bringing my own gear to different gigs, like, loading them up in the car. And, like, a lot of people say, how do you fit that so much equipment in the car? I was like, yeah, look, you just have to go to the gig and get it going, you know, um, so I'm kind of still bringing my gear kind of around, but mostly my gigs now are kind of nightclubs, dance bars, so they have a setup, so they have a set their own setup, but the journey keeps going on, and I just love gigging, I love music, and was your granddad into it as well, he was, he, was he loves music, my granddad loves music, he actually got my first kind of controller at, at that age, him and um, my own, kind of my uncles, they kind of all chipped, they all, they all chipped in for me, our uh, first controller um, at the time, and it was just unreal. It really was. What was the feeling like after the first gig? Uh, the feeling after the first gig was end. amazing because it's just like everyone was up having a good time and everyone was on the dance floor and like I'm like Jesus, this this can go far now. Really can at that age, yeah, you know. Um, so that would have been what six years ago. Six years ago, yeah. I, th- I think with with anything with any industry, when you get that, that's why I asked what was it like when you finish and you realise, oh man, that was like was I mad. didn't get that kick. Kick. Off anything else and then all right hang on there's something developing here and then that passion is there oh. so if you have that passion it, that's it you will go places oh of like, course you're like, not going to let yourself kind of well, let yourself fail because that's what you learn fail fail, you. fail 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 as much as you want and keep on going but that passion that's underlying it's going right, what to learn off that failure what to learn off that failure right Th- that it music is. didn't work it didn't go with that crowd whatever I haven't got a clue from the music side of things of course but when you have that passion you have oh. that drive I like if I always say to people, if you have a passion for it, just go for it. You know what I mean? Get that goal, reach that goal. Like I remember, I was, I was doing a gig the last year. It was Shedfest down in Wexford. Um, I got asked to do that gig back in January. I got a text message from the the, the event manager to say, "Will you come come and do a Shedfest gig in May?" Um, it was the night of the Champions League final, Liverpool and Madrid. I remember Liverpool losing out on the on the final, but I kind of dragged on that night, and yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I I wasn't playing till like one o'clock in the morning. But like the adrenaline. Um, beforehand was unbelievable like co- coming up to a Man, stage there was, was about 2,000 there was about 2,000 people at that gig like it was just unbelievable like biggest crowd you've oh, played the biggest them? crowd I've played at so far yeah what was the energy like the energy was just insane oh my god I literally kicked off the night with Fateless and it was just mental insomnia yeah insomnia DJ. yeah insomnia yeah. yeah absolutely insane I was in at the uh, I beat the orchestra I beat the orchestra or whatever in the tree arena at the weekend just gone so they'd have they have the big orchestra yes. live and insomnia was one of them. It was you know, insane. It was one of the, one of the bangers. One of the yeah, bangers. It yes, because like, it's always gonna be, isn't it? It always is. It always is a floor filler. It surely is. Um, and the dream for me kind of is to kind of DJ abroad. That would be my next kind of goal. Just get into, into the UK. Get into the UK. Maybe Liverpool and maybe the dream of it was always a visa, like a visa. You know, 
Yeah. Um, maybe a kind of time span, right? Like that. You, you, you do have time on your side. Yes, of course. Yeah. So like maybe in the next maybe two or three years, something like that, just to get over there and see how it goes. Um, I'm currently in the middle of releasing my own song at the moment I as saw well. That, yeah. So that'll be interesting, you know. Um, been working with a guy from the UK. He's a producer, uh, Grammy nominated. He used to work Brilliant. with Cap Capital FM. So. We're kind of in the middle of that now, producing a song and see where it goes. Dance, what's dance, the, yeah, what's dance, the vibe off it? dance, very, very vibey, like summer, summer, summer vibes. So, right. um, kind of kick it in now to the summer months and see how that goes. And when you when, when ideally, when you're hoping to, um, ideally, I'm hoping to kind of release it, yeah, maybe the middle of end of April, maybe. Um, fingers crossed, everything goes well, and Brilliant. just build it into the summer months. Then, when, when, when you release it, we'll. Gar <laughs> do that. Tea, you, we'll push it, but what we'll do, we'll put it for a time as well as the opener to the podcast. That'd be great. As, as that tune on I the podcast. I would really appreciate that. that. We'll link it in then with your own That would be insane. Podcast or, or, or <laughs> that as well. Just for crack. Yeah, that, that, would, that would be class. That 100%. would be really, really good. 100%. You imagine, imagine the thoughts though, even, obviously you've done the course and down the line, if you start teaching that or if you set up yeah. yourself or just say, for example, you could be using your own music to your own boot camps or circuits oh. or whatever. You, you might imagine having your own, oh, your beyond, own song. Beyond real, imagine having your own song and just training with your own song like in a in the middle of a spin session or something like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it'd, be, it'd be just amazing. Big Liverpool fan. I'm a massive Liverpool fan. Deadly. Big win over not, the weekend. Not, not a bad weekend, was it? <laughs> <laughs> seven nil, huh? Uh, that's Against it. Man United. When you ask how long the podcast is, about seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep relating. Yeah, exactly. Wardy behind the third camera here, he's a massive Liverpool fan. As Liverpool well. fan. Oh, I couldn't believe it. When, it. when it hit three goals, it's like, here we go, Wait, this is it now, but not seven. Like, seven is a massive number, you yeah, know? Yeah, Especially against Man United. I think Ward is United. <laughs> <laughs> he He's having to sit here and throw it. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you know what, to be fair, uh, like, no. I'm a Liverpool supporter as well. Yeah, I yeah. But I actually enjoy watching United play football. And like I, I wouldn't be a diehard, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be a diehard fan in terms of hating other that's it, no, no. I like watching United play a bit of football, and they have been playing. Yeah. But my God, you weren't expecting the same. And Bobby to get the score sheet as well at the oh, end. Oh, unbelievable! Bobby Firmino, yeah. some player like you know. Um, but like United you know, have been playing the last couple of weeks, playing brilliant football. You know, yeah. Um, giving credit there, like, and it's good for it's good for the Premier League. Which it is, is it which really is, good is for anybody who actually watches or supports a team in the Premier League. It's so great as much as you might want to slate them and stuff. Yeah, like, like Liverpool that. a few weeks ago, they were ninth and tenth in the league, and now they're kind of up to fifth. You never know where it could go. It could go top four. So see how that goes. Yeah. We'll have to get it. Anyway, we're going to jump into a 10-minute tangent. All right, so this is yeah. the first time we're doing it, so it's just going to be a completely random topic generator. Yeah. I know I've just placed my phone somewhere. There we go. Well, I'm going to just go on to a completely random topic. All right, Perfect. random topic generator. And we'll just hit the very first thing that comes up, which is... If you could call up anyone in the world and have a one-hour conversation, who would you call? Oh, that's a good question. That's a really good that's question. A random one. Um, so, to, who could you pick up the phone and chat to? For, so, it's an hour-long conversation. It can't be boring. Uh, an hour-long conversation. Um, so, big into music. I would probably pick Calvin Harris. He is my number one kind of DJ that I always looked up to when I was younger and. I love him because he's like I he's I know he's Scottish, but uh like he he's actually come to Ireland in the summer and not for longitude as well. So I always lo I always loved him, um, and I love to chat to him. You what, know sort, what, I mean? what sort? What sort? So if you if you're a chitchat, what can you picture yourself? Give me all the tips. What, what, Give me all the tips about DJ. Maybe like coming towards the end of the conversation, we'd probably could have come in and see a see a DJ at the back of the back of the decks. You know, ask him about his failures. Ask about his failures, everything like that, you know, um, how he started DJing and what brought him into the big music scene, going abroad, and he'd give me all his tips, and yeah. I kind of have that on board, and it'd be great to chat to him. Would you like to play at uh, the likes of a Tomorrowland or any of that sort? That'd of be the dream. That would be the dream. Tomorrowland would be always the dream. But uh, like the kind of the, the likes of Electric Picnic or Longitude here, that would be great as well, you know. Deadly. So you're, you're, you're chit-chatting to Calvin Harris and he says, listen, I'm uh, doing a gig next week. Do you want to come in and do a bit with me? Share the stage with me? Is that it? Is that the pinnacle? That would be amazing. Or I would it, be a little bit nervous, sorry, coming in with Calvin Harris. Like, probably the one of the best DJs in, in the world. Like, he's he's just insane. So 
I would obviously, yeah, definitely get that it going. You see it in football all the time. You see, you, you see yep. young eighteen-year-olds that are making their debut for a team, understand them beside Ronaldo or Messi or someone. Of course, like being like he was my idol. Idol, them. So there's absolutely no reason why you can't go down that road. Unreal. And share stage with my yeah, man. yeah. He'll be he'll be contacting you. There's there's nothing stopping you. Well, is that's it? it. Like you know, it's like social media. The way social media has gone now and contacts, it's all that. You're like. Right now, you know. So if you could have right, so we'll, we'll go with that question again. So we're able to call up anyone in the world, right, out of the music industry. I yeah. Know, sport, football. Who are you thinking? Jurgen Klopp. Uh, I don't know. If I was to pick one, I probably would pick um, Stephen Gerrard. Yeah. Stephen Gerrard. Yeah, yeah. I love Stevie G. Um, he was some player for Liverpool, like he really was. Yeah. Um, good character about him as well. Um, yeah, he'd always, I'd always love to chat to him. Yeah. Deadly, oh, 100%. 100%. I was a big fan of Stevie G. Yeah, just oh, you know, go box to box, and if it, if it opened up, he'd hit it. He'd, he'd take always shot, take the shot, like, yeah. yeah. And wasn't afraid to take a yellow for the team or a red for the team. Yeah. If needed, Roy Keane esque. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, big yeah, time. And, and It'd yeah. either be Steven Gerrard or probably Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, I do. I look at Ronaldo as well, and I was getting slated for going across to uh, Al Nasser and all this. Yeah. People don't know what's in other people's lives and what's behind the scene and all that. You know, you just don't know, like, do you really? But the fact that people know his name, kids know his name. I mean, kids that probably barely ever seen him play football because they're too young. Crazy. They know his name. They're still celebrating when they score a goal. They're still shouting Ronaldo and Messi, obviously. Messi. And Mbappe is of this world and stuff. Two of the best players of all nearly all time, like, you know, so. If it was me, if I was to... If you were to pick anyone, who would you pick? I don't know. See, it's an hour-long conversation, so... Music wise, <laughs> it's hard a choice, isn't it? Probably after my dead Elvis or something. My my music, my yeah yeah. I yeah. to tell you my musically, I could be listening if I had a playlist put together. I could go from Calvin Harris to Tiesto to Elvis, Elvis. to Abba to the Furies. Furies. It anything like could be anything broad spectrum. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I genuinely like complete broad spectrum oh I'd probably go to a comedian or something like comedian a, yeah yeah oh, Dave Chappelle or something like that someone that you actually know you're going to have a laugh here you're going to have a laugh um, and that's obviously apart from family or friends or if you're if they were past or dead or alive or anything like that or 100%. someone you haven't seen but um, yeah that's random 10 minute <laughs> the 10 minute tangent I think we're going to throw that in a little bit more but we'll do one or, two, yeah. one or two more of them as well uh, then course wise yeah friends that you've met on the course that are all doing a course in Wexford. You seem like a close knit group. There was a decent amount of there was, that it was a great up the grad. There was really was. We we were really, we were really close. We were so close, like you know what I mean? Down in Wexford, we were like the first couple of weeks we got to kind of know each other, get to know each other and see where they were from and like it was a great group of us, you know. Um and, and I recognise you from the TV. Yeah, they did. They did recognise me from the T V, <laughs> yeah. First day to pull them with my parents, that was just a how great did that, how did that? I literally yeah, so how would that happen? How would that go from so so f- from basically from pulling my parents back in RT two? That was when I was eighteen. Um, I just literally seen it on the website, and I said, "Look, I'll just apply for it. Go for it. Why not?" Um, parents were involved. You obviously, obviously have a good relationship with your parents. Yeah, you like, like I'm like, very very family family person. I love my family. Like really family person. Um, like many siblings. And I have one younger brother. He's eighteen. Um, and then I have two younger sisters. They're eight and two so, so there's the quite eldest. and the eldest of the, of the whole family like so there's a quite a bit of a gap there but um yeah i i love them like you know um and like just going back to the pull with parents thing i uh signed up back in a couple of years ago when i was 18 and um, signed up and literally rt had actually knocked on my door there that week after i signed up to say look you're in at least come on in yeah parents involved and um, they signed me up for the two dates i went on two blind dates on that show, <laughs> it was just hilarious. Like, and access was RTE. Like, there, I haven't watched. Yeah, I so I haven't, as in, I haven't watched pulling with your parents. parents. I've watched first dates, first dates. Yeah, so like that. so pulling my parents, like your mom and dad would have um, full access to your Tinder account. So they were actually on my Tinder, kind of swiping through, <laughs> swiping <laughs> through bits and bobs to see which one who would you, who would you match with. Like, you know, they're, so they're choosing. <laughs> They were choosing the girls, yeah, for me on the blind dates. And did your dad have similar <laughs> taste? <laughs> like, like, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a, 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 got a date. For, uh, she was she was from Dublin. And then there was another girl, and she was from, um, she was from Wexford. But uh, 
they went fairly well, like, but um, at the end of it, we were just friends, like, you know. Yeah, well, you seem like a mannerly, like, like, we were talking about this before we started the podcast. You seem like a gentleman, you seem like a nice fella, you can see that you've, yeah. you're a mannerly uh, guy and like, your parents have brought you up well, you can see that you're from a family. There's, yes. a, good, there's a good, strong family unit there, so I would imagine it would be something drastic for you not to yeah. get on with somebody or disrespect. I would say, yeah, respect for a girl you're being brought up 100%. that way and stuff like that. So Definitely. Yeah, like, credit to your man. Uh, yeah, um, no, um, thanks so much. Like, and it's literally then after that show, then I went straight into first dates. That was it. That was on the on show there literally last year. Yeah. That was just a different experience altogether. Oh, my God. Go on, talk it, to me. It was unreal. We've, we've got time. It was unreal. Like, I literally, I seen the link online and I said, I'll apply for it. And I didn't think I'd get it. You know what I mean? Um I got a Sorry. call the week after and she said, come on up for an interview, Keen. Come on up and so do it. To interview, to get on, yeah. You have to go for an interview to do it. There's a few bits and bobs you have to go through the process of getting onto that show. So I went through three steps. So there was like an interview online, Zoom call, and then there was like another interview face-to-face and then you had to do something else to get on the show. Yeah. So I actually was lucky enough to get on the show. Um, the day it was back in August, though, it was kind of summer. Yeah. Summer, you could wear the shirt and all. And, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So I went on a I went on a day with a girl from Limerick on it, um, and that was a great crack, great experience. We're still in touch now. Brilliant. We're still kind of good friends, and we're going to be up now in a few weeks again. So Brilliant. yeah, it's really really good. It was really good go experience. To a gig or something. Yeah, going to go to a gig together and see how it works out. You know what I mean? Brilliant, brilliant. Any nerves on that? Uh, not really. No. Um, I kind of just be myself. Really, I know the cameras were kind of close enough to you, but I just kind of felt being myself and take control and just keep going we've uh, actually one of the lads here Hassan he does a few bits he was on it as well we've, was we've, he yeah we've, we've about six students I think that have come through courses that have ended up on four stages are you serious I swear to god yeah That's two fine. of them two of them on it um, oh yeah yeah the, the name is after escaping me Christina uh, I can't remember the, the partner or the, the date at the time both students had done the image course and they were sitting at a table on <laughs> a date with each other. Like, brilliant. Oh my god. Brilliant. We should do image dates. Image dates, yeah. <laughs> only, only nice, healthy food and Yeah, bars. yeah, yeah. But like I the, the interaction I got from people from that show was unreal. Like um like the feedback. Platform. Like, platform. Like, platform unbelievable. Like for Instagram wise, it was just insane. Um like the age that you're at, it's brilliant to get positive feedback. It's great. Of people of a similar age because the world we're in you can just get Slated, slated. Oh, like social media can be quite bad at times, but then it can, the other the other side it can be great, you know. Mm. Um, but like a lot of people support me on that show, you know. Yeah, and, you're putting uh, yourself out there though. That was it. That was a big thing, you know. Um, yeah. especially with the DJ and career as well. Like so, it got me like really good um publicity and stuff. And the application, so you go on RTE, you've done for states and stuff like. So you're obviously confident yeah. enough to say do you know what I'll throw myself in there and, and, and see what the crack, the crack is if you, you got your eye on and yeah like, like I, that, I, that I'd, I'd love to get into radio I'd love to get into kind of being a radio like I don't know like a radio DJ maybe uh, yeah. getting into you've done a few bits with Dave Harrington yes I did Dave Harrington yeah down on East Coast he's a lovely lad he really is Um, just maybe get in there and see is there an opportunity and where did you you studied in Bray to do I studied in Bray to do music I studied in Bray doing music production and DJ Technique studied that for a year when COVID was back. Yeah. Um, and then I said, look, I'll come in and do a radio course with Today FM. So I did a school, uh, school, what was that? A school um, course where you just come up every Tuesday night, do an even course up there. Okay. In the studios and all, and that was great. Just getting the grips of the equipment, what it's yeah. like, talking into mics. Talking into mics kinda. and stuff. Um, getting kind of that radio voice as well and introducing songs you let me know if you, how, if you know how to get the radio voice because <laughs> I sound like I'm a husky speaking through a walkie talkie <laughs> covered in a pair of tights <laughs> <laughs> it's, from te- it's, it's the same poor El Polaris the same as me yeah it's yeah from, it's from teaching classes years ago with no microphone just roaring 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 roaring, 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 roaring. So, yeah any tips on that uh, microphone voice let me know I oh, surely will I'll, I'll, I'll keep that 100%. so any non-fitness stuff any kind of 16, 17, 18 year olds at a loose end not sure what to do like music think about maybe getting into that side of things Give yeah them, what, what, where, like where, I've where, got where a load I've got so many messages and early, every week people text me like how did you get into DJ and like, like 16, 17 year olds ask me what's the best equipment to use what like 
where did you where would you go for your first gig? How would I get around? I always text them and say, look, get just get a small bit of gear, get a laptop going, get your USB. You're in Dublin. You can't be can't be going. You can't be texting people saying just get a small bit of gear. <laughs> 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 just get your, just get your decks. Just get get a pair of decks. Get a Pioneer deck, and just set it up. And um, go go and just get your platform. What sort, of, what sort of to get someone started? What sort of budget would you say they'd need to just to get started? Just e- even to play around in their bedroom, not gigs or anything like that. Just to actually see if they they enjoy it. Like you're talking two hundred quid, five hundred quid. Yeah, you're talking two or three hundred quid to get that, something that's to kind worth. of get something started. That's worth it, you know. That'll last you for a while. Yeah. And then just kind of set up maybe an Instagram page. Just kind of get yourself out there and um, go around asking different people. Can I, can I come up? Have, yeah. a, have a gig, have a play. See what you think. Was there many of you on the Tuesday night course? Uh, there was. And that was done through the course in Bray? Yeah. It was like a, like a work placement yeah. type of thing? that was it, yeah. How many but, would you say, how many of you uh, would go to the Tuesday night? There was a good few of us. I think there was about 15 of us. So there was a good vibe. There was atmosphere. a good vibe. Great atmosphere every every evening. Yeah, it was great. Like and still in touch with them. Still in touch. Brilliant. Still in touch. Yeah, we always kind of text each other. See how we're getting on. And brilliant. Like brilliant. everyone has different journeys where they're going on. And one lad is over now in the UK traveling and stuff like that. So we're always kind of in touch. Yeah. You'd be amazed. It could be five years down the line where one of them might come in. Yeah. In a conversation where you need something or they need something and you'll help or it could be opening up a door, anything like that. Exactly. Like, never born a bridge. Never. Never ever born a bridge. No. You know, um, and then equipment wise, what's the what's the best of the best? Oh, like, I love what, like what do you strive towards? Uh, so I'm using Denon at the minute, but I'll always love P- Pioneer. Like Pioneer is top of the market at the moment. Like CDJs, I yeah. love I love them. I love mixing on them. I think they're great. Um, plugging in your ear headphones and just listening, kind of beat beat matching and like Pioneer is probably the top. Have we got anything Pioneer in here, Wardy? Anybody who doesn't know Wardy, and it's Wardy yeah. he's, he's the guy who's flicking the cameras around. He's a legend. <laughs> yeah. We've no pioneer. This is shit. Where is it going here? here? Yeah. Like, get rid of that Yamaha. Get rid of that. Yeah. Oh, I love this. <laughs> to be fair, when we were getting the set up here, we, I literally went and had a look to see, right, what's some of the gear that the likes of Joe Rogan uses in his studio? And we'll get that. And we'll get the, the arms and the shore mics and, and all be that. be amazing. Like, like, it's all getting replaced with Pioneer now. <laughs> Thanks. Pioneer is top. It is top. Yeah, 100%. I recommend Pioneer to anyone. Deadly. It's great. Right, let's go 10 minute tangent again. Yes, let's go. Random. Does having an does having a day off for a holiday increase or decrease productivity at work? That's a shy question. We're going to change that. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'll tell you what that does. That decreases the flow of a podcast. It does. That's a shy, yeah. That's, it does yeah, that's a shy question. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who in your life brings you the most joy? Um, yeah, I have to say my family, my parents. Like they're yeah. always there for me. Yeah. Always there for me. Like even going back to when I started DJ, and they always kind of support me. Sorry, Calvin Harris, you're not getting this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Like you know. So as I said, I'm always a family person, and like yeah, they they always kind of support me, and it was kind of kicking off. My you DJ the favorite. Career. Say that again. Are you the favor? Uh, I probably would say I am the favor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the favor. I don't know now. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, well, they're, they're fairly obviously a family one, same with me. I have two kids and recent yeah. wife, so that's the obvious one for me. Of course, yeah. We got one more because that was a quick one. What defines a sport? Is fishing a sport? How about video game tournaments? Oh, see, that's an interesting one. I was talking to. Um, a chap at the weekend at that gig, a friend's son, right. he had a couple of years ago won a Fortnite tournament, five grand, whatever like that. Now, esports, they're a thing. So I it know. is. What what defines a sport? We have a dartboard there. Like, is it athletic? Is it capabilities? Or can I can I even be pool? Maybe. Yeah. Is in yeah. Do, like, do you have to sweat for a sport? Oh, of course. You know what I mean? I I love my I love my golf. That's a sport. You can get it your is. steps in, but. It's great. Is is playing Tiger Woods on the Xbox, and I'm really, really good at like I'm going to be better at Tiger Woods on the <laughs> Xbox than I am in golf and real golf. Life. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the sport I should follow? I don't know, but it I is gaining popularity. You know. Yeah, absolutely. It is like what whatever sport you like, you're into. You know, everyone's different. Um, you gaming? Do you do any gaming? I do. I did a lot of gaming when I was did younger. Did you? I did a lot of gaming when I was younger. Yeah, I used to. Or I used to play. Style or? Oh, I was a FIFA man all day. 
I love FIFA. And would you play online? Played online. Ultimate team. I think I was I always loved FIFA thirteen, FIFA twelve. I was actually so really good at it. like um I actually kind of I ent- we entered a, a FIFA tournament back in my local village when I was younger. I actually have a picture on my phone. I was only a young lad. Um my favourite team when that was Real Madrid. I've played uh I, I lunar guy, um he was twenty five at the time. I played him in a final and I bet him. Yeah. I remember just screaming the house down like <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So yeah. that was an online tournament. That was an online tournament. Yeah, yeah. FIFA. Yeah. Jesus. I, when you said I remember FIFA, was it thirteen? FIFA thirteen. Yeah. My favorite. This is you. Know, I'm old. My favorite FIFA was FIFA ninety eight. My. God. <laughs> <laughs> you could play indoor. <laughs> indoor. Anybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody who's listening around the forty ish age, FIFA ninety eight. FIFA 1998, you could play indoor and it was easy to score overheads. So if you're into scoring crackers, you could cross, <laughs> you could cr- like especially with indoor, cross it in, cross it in, double tap square, overhead, bang, <laughs> yeah, yeah. top corner. And yeah, yeah, be yeah. like 10 all. But oh, FIFA 98, class. the indoor section of it was class. Oh, I love FIFA, really. Were you always FIFA ever, Pro F? Always FIFA. FIFA did you, did FIFA. you ever play Pro Evolution soccer? I did, I did play Pro Evolution as well. But uh, I back always love FIFA. See, FIFA, FIFA's gone on now. Back in the day, back in the day, old again. <laughs> ah. Pro Ev took over for a while. There was always Pro Ev, FIFA, Pro Ev, FIFA. Was, wasn't and it? Pro Ev was a more realistic sort of a game plan. You, you couldn't. Uh, you couldldn't do what I just said. You couldn't just double tap and score <laughs> an overhead from score. outside the box. No, so you couldn't, couldn't score a volley from the halfway line. Yeah. And it curls in top corner and unreal. But but Pro Ev, you had to actually be good, good. at it. But then, I don't know, it was a money thing. FIFA just upped their game and the upped online the game. side of things. and It's, all cool. that, like. it's so different towards yeah, the likes of FIFA 14, 13. It's so different now. Like It's just a totally it, different game. We'd be talking about. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just, sports and it's crazy. and all and this. It's gone so crazy now, you know. There's a... Uh, what was it? So I, I know loads of people are against sort of gaming and stuff like that. And now I, I've got kids and they're big into yeah. gaming or it's... Trying to find a balance, I think, between reality and, and, and all that kind of I stuff. Think it is. is it just FIFA or was there any other sports or like when was it the DJing that you kind of saw? Like, hang on, instead of yeah. instead of a Saturday night where I might be in having a FIFA tournament, I get I, you. I, I can I can make a few quid in this yeah, game here. Because the, the last time I actually played P- FIFA PS3, PS4, I think it was about four or five years ago now. I just came up on it. Next, we have an Xbox in here somewhere. I think it's yeah, in the yeah. changing room. We have an Xbox in the changing room. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's mad. Yeah, just. So, yeah, so like I just kind of gave up on it. I said, look, rather being stuck in my room every Saturday, Friday night, why not go out and just DJ at gigs, meeting different people, seeing new things, yeah, seeing new venues. Deadly. Well, anyway, I think yeah, I think we can't go to to, to put this question to bed. What defines a sport and is fishing a sport? And I, do you know what? In in my point of view, from my point of view, I'd say if somebody's doing an activity that they have a passion for and it benefits them. If they want to call it a sport, I am going to allow them to call it a sport. Yeah. No, no, 100%. I agree on that, yeah. Definitely. Um, right. So, I think we've covered the course, we've covered the DJ inside of thing, we've covered the sports, we've covered the dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is next from, say, health and fitness point of view? Where can you see yourself going if you wanted to set something up outside of DJing, whether it's classes, going down the gym route, whatever like that. Why did you do a course in the first place? Yeah, so basically when I was just out of secondary school, I uh, I did a course of healthcare. So I, I did that course for a year, FETAC level five, whatever it was. Um, I did that course. So I'm a, I was qualified healthcare assistant. Okay. So I was in a nursing home and I didn't really like it at the time. So I said, look, why not just change? Why not change course? Why not go into the fitness? Because I was always mad fitness. Like I'm yeah. always full of energy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, look, why not do a gym course? Um, so I seen something online, something came, something came into my head to do a course, gym course. And uh, seeing you guys online, I said, look, will I do this? And I was like, yeah, of course, I'm going to do it. And I signed up for it. And not messing them 17 weeks or the one, probably one of the best 17 weeks of my life, really. You, you, you don't need to, you it don't was, need to say it because you're it on the great. podcast. It was great. <laughs> it was great. You know what I mean? And uh, just doing the gym course was great, you know. Um, and I see myself maybe in the next couple of years. Continuing with the gym work. Good. Because I, I love fitness. Love it. And the uh, nursing course you done, was yeah. that just something you fell into? Yeah, because my mum is uh, my mom's a social care worker, so she comes back, she comes from kind of healthcare background. Yeah, my sister's the same, yeah. Yeah, so I kind of said, look, I'll do it for a year and see how it goes. So I was in doing a, I was in working in a residential care home. 
um, for yeah. quite a few years. Well, not a few years, but a few months. Yeah. And uh, it just wasn't the passion. It wasn't for the passion for me. No, yeah. It just didn't really work well. And when you went back to the parents and said, listen, this isn't, I'm not digging this. Well, yeah, no, they, it's something you've they, done. They, yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't mind. They said, look, Keen, you do what you want to do. Brilliant. Do what you love. And that was it then, really. Brilliant. And then obviously you stumbled across us with social media or just probably an online ad or something. Online like ad, it really was really you. And it was actually you talking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it was, <Yeah>. yeah. <laughs> Don't look yeah. in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. But like, yeah, I see myself maybe the next year continuing with the DJ and continuing with the gym work. Because I love it, kind of, kind of, and it works well. It's a good kind of lifestyle to have, you know. Well, I saw, I've seen as well. You're doing some stuff with was it some cosmetic stuff and some teeth whitening stuff. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what, how are you getting? Yeah, into that I'm doing that. Um, the past two or three months now, I'm kind of doing like. And was it like brand ambassador type thing? Brand ambassador it? kind of PR kind of thing. Like you're going around, kind of showing off their brand, and like I'm in early up there in early two or three weeks, kind of putting on stuff on Instagram and. Getting discounts like like you can use the code ten percent off. Getting using teeth whitening foam. Lovely. And, Don't talk to me about teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's a great spot and they're lovely staff up there. They're in Crumlin, and um, so if anyone wants to go out and check them yeah, out, give them a show. Give them a show because like they love it up there. They're really good. Yeah, they're really really good. Tell them they're more than welcome to come in. You want. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah, of course I will. They probably won't yeah. like me though. I went to Istanbul for my ones. Oh god. But, nah. They were they were off beforehand. I could have done with a bit of teeth whitening, but they still looked like yeah. That look, they were like that. My, my God, <laughs> no, it yeah. got to the stage with me. But when you're looking at, you're looking at, you're, everyone has insecurities. I got to the stage where me I was looking at the teeth going, Jesus, and you do because you just said you saw a video of us online. I yeah. probably would have looked back at that video after recording and just look at my teeth the whole time. Oh I ended up going to Istanbul, but I think when you go and you're called, and was that for a long play? Was that for a long time? Uh, a week. A Get week. the the whole. <laughs> Teeth, teeth done, done but done. Uh, the whole turkey teeth and thing. was it sore no no it no no it was grand <laughs> uh, and great yeah, to deal yeah. with but uh, you get you, you like you, you get sick if I had choices or with my own kids yeah. it'd be braces all Bra the way oh, like braces unreal I had braces for 20 months and I got so them off patience as well patience oh my god like I got them off last September it was one of the best days of my life like. what did you eat the day you got them off Oh, yeah, everything really. Like what, popcorn, what, popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like why you're not allowed to eat? Yeah, so like when you're with, with braces, you can't really eat sugary sweets because it kind of stains the braces and stuff. Can't really eat hard sweets as well. Like the likes of, you can't eat, well, you can't chew and chung them either. Um, yeah. But like the likes of popcorn and all, you can't really eat that. So <laughs> yeah. the minute I got my braces off, I went straight to the cinema. Popcorn and chewing Popcorn and chewing Popcorn and chewing Sat up and watched the movie, yeah. It was great. Brilliant. Yeah, I know. Like it braces all the way. Like the, it depends. Do you know what? It's different people, different ages, or right? yeah. like that. I would imagine people who are older and they might want to just maybe enhance their smile or whatever. They may yeah. be sick or something. They might go and get something done. Like, you I think difference. if you, if your if your teeth and you're able to actually have your teeth straight and stuff like that, or if you want them straight, keep the teeth you have. Keep the teeth you have. One hundred percent. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't regret getting them done because like yeah. I was sick of looking at myself a certain way, but I would keep. If I was younger, keep the teeth to have, get them and then get you. whitening out and crumbling. Yeah, uh, <laughs> whitening out and crumbling. Yep, yeah. cosmetic fairies crumbling, check it out. Brilliant. And skincare stuff as well. Yeah, skincare young. as well. So to do all facials as well, uh, that's amazing. Especially when you're going out on the night before, when yeah. you're going out gigging or so something. So you're like. rocking up, you're going to be rocking <laughs> up to a DJ set with fresh skin, white yeah, teeth. Yeah, white teeth. Right, <laughs> party, party, out, out, yeah. We, 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 we were in the, old, or the, the tree arena. I keep calling it the point. The, it's always going to be the point. Depth, you probably haven't a clue what the point oh, depot was. Oh, I have an So the tree arena. Yeah, yeah. Used to be called the point depot. Oh my God. And anybody over probably the age of 30, Two, it will always be called the Point Depot. Yeah. But they had this big blue light at the bar. I mean, Simon, Simon, myself and Simon actually went to Istanbul at the same time and we yeah. both got our, our teeth done. But wherever I had this blue ultraviolet light was shining on. Do you remember the episode of Friends where the white teeth are just beaming there? Beaming. My God, it was, it was like you're standing there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was there, Point of Hernican. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, we'll do one more 10 minute tangent, pal. And I think that's going to be us. Done. Amazing. How much time do you spend watching sports in a week? Terrible one. <laughs> How should success be measured? And by that measurement, who was the most successful person you know? Right, so how, how, should, how should success be measured? And who was the most successful person you know? Oh, that's a good question, actually, yeah. Mm. It really is a good question. It's a good topic as well, you know. 
Kind of. like, yeah, it depends on who you're, how you're measuring. Obviously, that's why it's a two-part question. Yeah. I think, I don't know, people, people measure success differently. Like, you could measure, like, the same as anything. Like, even from, a, from our point of view, is a successful student somebody who comes through a course and opens a gym? Or is a successful person somebody who's so nervous about coming on and doing a course that they nearly don't do and they come here and they get confidence inner confidence that's it like, like there's, 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 there's I think a, there's a, a successful person is like you have to kind of work for it you know what I mean mm. like you have to like if you want something you have to work for it you know um, and achieve your goals as well yeah I think it comes to the age thing again like yeah some su- success for some people will be what's in their bank account that, that's, 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 that's what true. it is they might be miserable but yeah. they'll think that and then success for somebody else might be when they close their eyes at night time and they know that their kids are safe secure and yeah. manners like I would imagine after talking with you like I don't know maybe your mum and dad right success if they say see yourself and see that right you're on a platform you've got options you've got doors open for you 100%. you're going in different directions and you're influencing people especially of a certain age but you've got manners you've got your dignity you've got um yeah. You've got your head screwed on. So I maybe that's success for them. Like a good reputation. You know what I mean? As well. That's their success that they've done right by their kids and their kids are coming up good. Coming so up. T- to me, that's the measurement of success. It's that you're actually doing something good in the world, whether it's with your own kids, if you have kids, partner, if you've got a partner. And yeah. if it's for yourself, if you don't have any of that sort of stuff, maybe success might be a bit more goal orientated. More goals. You know what I mean? Yeah, and as you're you. older, it might change. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's it's all it's come it's all coming from a young age. Yeah. You know? So who's 100%. the most successful person, you know? Again, it's how you how you there's a fucking from the music industry. Yeah, I just said fucking on the podcast. Sorry. Yeah, I get you. Is, yeah. it, is, it, is, it, is it from the music side? Obviously you mentioned Calvin Harris. Is it Yeah. It's you know? it's I think it is coming from the music industry because I always remember looking at Martin Garrix when he was a young age. He was only 15, 16. Animals. 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 Great song. That song there yeah. brought him out and now he's playing worldwide. Um, and he's only a young age. You know what I mean? He's only literally, I think he's two years older than me. 23, 22. Like that song brought him out and now he's playing at Tomorrowland at that young age. Just incredible. Yeah. So what age is he now? He's, I think he's like 24 now. Jeez, I thought he was older. Yeah, I think he's like that. He's only a young age, yeah. Brilliant. So name a few. So, so Martin Garrix, name a few. So instead of same and instead of name the most successful, name a few that you know. Um, from the music industry or anywhere, 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 anyone, family, sport, someone you met in your old courses, a DJ that you like that isn't super famous, anyone. Um, sports, sports stars. Obviously, even Ronaldo's and your Messi's there. Yeah, they're successful from a corporate point of view as well but they've also achieved something within a sport that of course, I think, like, doesn't get achieved very often yeah of course um, I think like some maybe like you see the players Liverpool players coming up from academy like likes of Alexander Trent he's he's gone very successful now you yeah. know what I mean he's coming up he's gone up through the academy in Liverpool and he's worked his way up and now he's playing for the first team at a young age yeah. as well and maybe someone within the club directors of football or whatever, that's their success that they see hang on we've taken someone from within Liverpool I'm um, through the academy and through that's, academy. That, maybe that's how they're measuring their success obviously there's titles and stuff like that you, <laughs> yeah. can, you can you can measure with yeah. uh, as well um, yeah no, but for me I think then like how it should be measured I don't know if you're doing some sort of good in the world that good in the world might be just listening to somebody it might yeah. be creating something it could be something you invent it could be a business that you create it could create. be it could, it be, could be anything, anything. do you yeah. know what I mean so I think the measurement of it for me is maybe the impact you have on other people and those other people could be family they could be students they could yeah. be classmates do you know what yeah. I mean you might be in class one day and you're having an absolute stink of a day but you're confident you're used to talking you're well able to do say group instruction you can group stand up and you can teach but there might be somebody else that's just in that nervous. class that's introvert that it took everything for Ages. them to even pick up the phone to consider doing a course you yeah. might be having a shit day they might be having an average day and if you were to knock their confidence by actually saying, you know what, yeah, you're not great, you're not great at the group, that was shit. Or if you were to actually say, you know what, you're doing great, yeah. keep it going. I know it takes a little bit more for you to get up here. I'm doing this years. That's what keep I mean. Keep going. And they go home from class that day going, 
Jesus, is Kane getting me? I actually feel better. Maybe that's a successful day for the two years because you're is. after having that difference on that person. Yeah, I get Do you. I mean, and it's stuff like that. That for me, that's how I'd measure it. And when my kids grow up, I would like them to measure it that way. It's not a bank account or anything like that. All that stuff helps. It's not yeah. a. It's not a. It's not a business. I'm not successful because image fitness training. I'm not successful. I would rather have. Uh, I would rather have an average across average the thing. board in terms of business ventures or anything like that and know that my kids have manners and yeah. uh, respect for other people and the respect world respect is a huge thing yeah it is really is and even like go, I do a few teen, teen gigs at home they're only a young age they're only like 12, 13 but they always kind of look up to me you know what I mean I saw that I saw that they're taking look, pictures they're, with you yeah they're taking pictures and like in 4 or 5 years time when they get 80, 19 they'll be coming to all the gigs you know you know, so you're you're in a position where you can influence people, and I think my personal opinion. Like I was coming out of Aldi in a supermarket market last week, and these two young lads came up to me and asked for a picture, and I was like, "Yeah, why not?" Brilliant. Like that 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 means so much to them. Brilliant. Like you, like if they came up to you and you just say, "Look," you could easily just say, "No, don't want don't want a picture with you." you can get into the car, and drive off. That would just no. Yeah, don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole. You have to. You know, so you're going to be in a position, I think, more and more that you can influence people that way. Even the, the name, the word influencers is it means different yeah. things over the years and stuff like that. And obviously with social media, but I think you're in a in a unique enough position that people will always like music. They'll always find music, and there's yes. a particular cohort of people in that age group that will probably like that style of music that, that you music. like and that you're going to create as well, probably. Of course. So you're probably going to find yourself in a position. That's to be able to influence more and more. Definitely, like uh, like get this track out now soon, and maybe build an EP in the next couple of two years. You never know. Get it, Brilliant. get an album going. You know, so I've no doubt, no doubt you will. Whatever we, whatever we can help with, and any stage, dream. whatever we can help, we're we're, we're, we're here to help. But just to wrap it up, for the different bits that you have going on from the music industry, being at raves and everything else. I don't I know you don't drink yeah, much yeah, yeah, yeah. and like that. You're an absolute gent. You're a credit I to know, your so, parents so and the people that are around you. We should absolute very best look. I've no doubt we'll be doing another podcast down the line. But yes. yeah, you should be proud of yourself. There's my dad. Look, that's, there he is. That's my helper. How you get that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, listen, oh, thanks, thanks so much for coming. I loved every single minute of this. And look, these are great. These are absolute great. Thanks so much for everything. We'll do plenty more, everybody. DJ Keno. Thanks so Shout much. Go on, take it easy, pal. Take it easy.